guys how are you guys doing today we're gonna do a little bit of work so we got some new hub assemblies both left and right doesn't really matter which one i don't know why i pointed to one <laughs> but we're gonna, do be, we're gonna be doing hub assemblies today and iwe actuators i've never done these these shouldn't be any different than on my 2001 f-150 which they're pretty easy just highly recommend some bolt blaster I'm going to be putting a video, or not a video, a picture of all the list of all the tools that you need to in order to do this. Um, one thing I do recommend is some bolt, blaster, and a breaker bar. You're going to need it, and a lot of patience. But here we go. We ain't got no damn thousand dollar lift but we got some bottle jacks and we got some scissor lift jacks i really wouldn't trust them scissor lift jacks to save shit like i i myself would trust a fart after eating some gas station sushi before i'd trust one of these motherfuckers but i like to put them underneath there just in case if for some reason that bottle jack fails because i don't have i mean i do have jack stands somewhere i just don't have time to find them but uh yeah, I'm, I'm going to state the obvious, like every how-to video. First, you're going to jack the truck up and take the tire off. Duh. Alright, so after you got your your tire off, you're going to have two bolts back here holding the caliper on. Now, that being said, if you're just changing the IWE, you don't have to take this off. No matter what them fucking videos say, you don't have to take it off. However, I'm changing the hub too, so... Yeah, take them two bolts out, them two sun bitches are tight as hell. I don't know why, like, it's just your brake caliper. I mean, brakes are irrelevant anyways, you know what I'm saying? Like, but anyways, then after that, you want to take that up and you want to strap it up here with a rubber rope. I myself, because I'm a cheap bastard and I didn't go buy rubber ropes, set it on a five gallon bucket. You just don't want it hanging by this. And you're going to want to remove this and this little bolt right here i'm trying to get what size them are i can't remember now i think that's a 10 and then your dust shield you don't have to remove it i like to remove it especially removing the hub and then we're gonna have to bust that cocksucker loose too just take this off just to pull this forward so that way we can pull this cv axle out the back now there's many fucking ways you can do this. Like I've just looked up many different versions on YouTube earlier. There's another one where you can go up there to the CV axle and undo each fucking bolt. Some stupid bullshit like that, but that just sounds like way more work than it needs to be. So first things first, we'll get this removed and we'll come back to you guys. All right, so now that we got the brake caliper off, I just set the bolts and shit there. We're gonna undo this here in a minute. So that way we'll have more room to fuck with this. However, this little thing right here, I, I had mine propped out already earlier, but basically you just pop them out and undo the plug. And then you just unroute all these clips, which is pretty fucking easy. And then this is a 10 millimeter, I already loosened it up. And these are 10 millimeters on your dust cover. And, uh, yeah, we'll get right back to you here in a minute as soon as I get done with this because I can't do this and record at the same time. All right. All right. So, sorry I've kind of went ahead a little bit of myself. But these little things, I just use a little, I call this my little crow foot. But I just use it and pried them all out, unplugged it, um, took that bracket off, and uh, took all of these hub bolts out which are 18 millimeter. There's four of them, one on each side. They're gonna be tighter than fuck. So you need a whole bunch of this shit. I cannot praise this PB bolt blaster penetrating canvas enough. Anyways, and as far as this fucking thing goes, I don't know what that dumb bitch I watched do it, but I'm gonna try something, because these fuckers are a pain in the ass. I can already tell you that's gonna be a pain in the dick. So instead, I think I'm gonna try this um, tie rod end 
I'm going to try to drop it to where I can just turn it out towards me. Now, don't quote me. We're both going to learn together, but I think that'll work. Now, as far as the hub, once you get all of them out, all the hub bolts out, just hit on these right here. I already busted mine loose the other day, but I didn't have a hub because I was wanting to see if it's my hub's bad, which my hub really isn't bad. I'm almost 98% sure it's my IWE actuator, but while I'm here, I'm, I'm thinking about just going and replacing it anyways. But it's really hard to do this and hold this fucking camera. <laughs> but one last thing I forgot to mention is this little thing right here. You got to take this little cap off like so. It's kind of a pain in the dick sometimes. You might just be able to use pliers. That might be better. Yeah. She's using some pliers, wiggle her around a little bit. A little spindle nut. You gotta take that son of a bitch off. Shouldn't be very tight, but it's gonna be a pain in the dick because this thing fucking moves. La la la. But yeah. You get Alright, so that was a lot easier to bust than I thought it was gonna be. I really don't know what size it is. I know in America, a 13 16 fist set motherfucker is probably actually like some fucking sling shit of stand metrics. But uh, next thing is, you want to take you a good hammer. Which I don't know if this one's going to do the job. We're going to try. You want to whack right there to shock it so that way it'll pop it up. Let's see if I can do it right here. Yeah, no. We're going to get a bigger hammer. All right, the tie rod idea does not work. At least it didn't for me. Close, but no cigar. Might work. Somebody down in the comments will be like, oh yeah, it'll fucking work. Who cares? So, I got this busted loose. It's 18 millimeter bolt as well. I'm going to take a hammer and hit that. I put this rubber over here because this moment is going to sling down. So, we're going to give her a go. Once we get it popped loose, move this fucking scissor jack out of the way. So that way we can do this motion, like so. And then we'll take the CV axle well, first. We'll take the CV axle and go over the sway bar, sway bar link. And then you do the slide right off. Here's my old one. Pretty sure that's what's been causing our problems. But next thing is, clean all this shit up right here. This is where your, um, what do you call it? The vacuum, or the seal, the vacuum seal is going to be. So you want to take some brake cleaner or something. I'm going to spend probably another 30 minutes cleaning that so much up. Before you put your new one on. They have deletes that you can install. That's basically this thing right here taken out except it's a sleeve and it fits over these gears right here these little teeth and they fit inside they fit over this right here the part of the hub which causes even whenever it's in two wheel drive to be locked in and spin the whole front differential including the front drive shaft to the transmission which I myself don't really like my shit being locked in all the time so I'm doing the IWE. Now ask me again here in, here in a couple months. Whenever I'm replacing this bitch again. Because this is the most problematic motherfucker on this truck. But uh, I do recommend going to 1A Auto to buy them. I bought both of these and both hubs for both, for both sides of the truck. For I think it was 350 bucks is the cheapest that I found them. But... Yeah, just clean this up and then we'll start the reinstallation. May also be a stupid idea, but I'm, I'm going to take this wire brush and go around this surface so in my hub assembly fits nice and smooth. I mean, that might be just me being petty. I don't know. But um, yeah, we got that pretty much cleaned all off, all the grease. So that way that seal will have a good fit. But here we go. Alright, once you get it back on, you want to tighten all three of these. 
like kind of like you do on a tire lugs on a tire you want to do one a little bit and do another one on the other side and the top one you know what i mean there's a certain amount of fucking foot pounds or inch pounds as some bitch on the fucking internet said i just get them pretty tight that's what i'm gonna do anyways <clears throat> i don't think they need to be super tight the hub bolts yeah i make them fuckers tight like two or three grunts each bolt with a cheater bar yeah that's me yeah once you do that um i think you can put on your your uh, vacuum lines and then after that then we'll put this hook this back up it's gonna be a bitch but forever but uh yeah here we go all right so i thought my gopro died but it just started beeping at me so you want to put your abs sensor up top for your hub i don't know if you can see that or not and then just kind of jostle it around a little bit don't force it because you're gonna you gotta have it fit the splines um yeah don't over tighten those three bolts because i uh busted the head off one and i didn't really have it that fucking tight to be honest with you but it's whatever i'll get a new one here in a couple days and start this whole headache over again or i'll just leave it until it causes a problem again and then i will fix it because that's the kind of person i am yeah that's basically all there is to it and then basically just reinstall everything that's all there is to it my friends all right so run out of light well, i can't see in this fucking thing i can't breathe in this fucking thing and i can't ride in this fucking thing well, on the other side we'll have some more light and i'll show you some more of the process um anyways so whenever you do a spindle nut the one right down there you want to get it tight until it starts spinning i my fucking torque wrench oh shit i about fell my torque wrench is a half inch drive and my adapter broke earlier this week so i'm kind of just winging it so after i got it snug until it started turning the wheel the hub bearing itself i you know blocked it off and then got it just a quarter turn if that tighter but um because from my understanding it tightens itself and not just that you don't want to over tighten it and break that because that's a new cv axle and i don't know about you i haven't looked it up but uh i have a feeling that those bitches are going to cost quite a bit anyways so then you'll just route your um, ABS plug all the way up and plug it back up into the hole. And then just basically put your bearing, or your brake caliper back on after your rotor, obviously, and all that good stuff. Other than that, that's basically it, my friends. I'll, we'll do some more of this on the other side because it's, it's directly underneath the light of the shop, so it'll be a little bit better set up. But... Alrighty. Hey guys, sorry the GoPro died. However, we got the other side done. Um, just the main things I want to point out to you guys for this to finish this video off is I will say taking that up there off makes it a lot easier to pull that CVX out. And it's really not too bad to get that after you bust the bolt loose. Um, Take the bolt all the way off, obviously, if you've ever done ball doing anything, or even tie rods. Take the bolt all the way off, and then sh give it a good schwack right there to knock it out. Have you a bungee rope. And the hardest part of this whole job is getting that put back on there, because otherwise your ball joint just sits there and spins around. And the best way i found out to do it is to have your two jacks one that's holding the frame of the truck up let it down and then take another one the other jack and lift up the actual hub or right underneath the right at the very end of the lower control arm to push this up so that way you can get a clamp on it a c clamp and then tighten it down so that way it'll wedge that ball joint in there that way you can tighten it once you get it up tight and snug you get your cheater pipe tighten her a couple times and then you're good to go but yeah i'm about to 
Um, start this truck up. Um, double tap all the hub bolts and the brake caliper bolts. Tightening them up with the cheater pipe. I'm gonna put the tire back on. Then we're gonna go for a test drive. See how it, see how it drives. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So, in essence of how the IWE is supposed to work, because I've been doing a lot of research, because I have no idea how the system works. And um, me being a new 12th gen owner, I figured I'd better learn. So, I'm going to try to explain this to people that's like me and doesn't really know exactly how this shit works. So, your steering knuckle sits in between here. See that? Those grooves fit together. And your steering knuckle would be right here. So, it sit just like that actually. And your CV axle would be coming through right here. So this right here is where it would suck the vacuum. This is the stem that would suck the vacuum. Because see if you push in. It's really hard to do this and film at the same time. But if you push in. And stick your thumb over it. It stays locked in, which in turn would suck the hub in. Therefore, you'd have full wheel drive. And then whenever, what's supposed to happen, whenever you switch to too high, it's supposed to release and completely release. However, from what it looks like, see, my seal's coming off already, but like the seal on this one, is sticking. This is the passenger side one. This is the one that was grinding and making noise. And that's because of that reason right there. Because the seal would stick and cause it to kind of half ass um, still be half ass engaged in a way. But that's how they work in a nutshell. And uh, yes, they are kind of pieces of shit. I might do the delete later on. However, um, for now, I'm just putting these ones back in there because I don't like the idea of having my front end locked in the whole time. Spinning them CV joints. It just that doesn't sound logical to me. But, at any rate, hope you guys enjoyed the video.